Olivia at Euston Station in London. Euston was the capital's first mainline station and it was the first to connect London with another city. The original Euston station opened in 1837 but it was completely rebuilt by the British Railways in 1960s in conjunction with the electrification of the West Coast Main Line reflecting the modern railway era. According to the history, the London and Birmingham Railway initially planned to build their London terminus at Euston Square, but objections from landowners forced a temporary relocation to Chalk Farm. After securing permission, Robert Stevenson led the project of Euston Station featuring a grand direct arch opened in July 1837 with the first intercity journey to Birmingham taking place in September 1838. By the 1840s, Euston Station became overcrowded, leading to its first major expansion in 1846, which included the addition of the Great Hall as the entrance to the station. Continued growth in traffic led to further expansions in the 1870s and 1890s, ultimately increasing the station to 15 platforms by the end of the century. According to Houston redevelopment plans, Phase 1 focused on expanding passenger and parcel train capacity requiring the demolition of the Great Hall and Doric Arch in 1962 to make room for 18 platforms. Phase 2 introduced a spacious, modern courtyard with new facilities and access to London underground services while preserving a few elements of the original station such as the London and Northwestern Railway War Memorial and Robert Stevenson statue. London Euston is the southern terminus of the West Coast Main Line, so it's a getaway from London to popular destinations like Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester, Edinburgh and Glasgow. You can buy tickets online or on-site from the ticket office, which is near the western entrance of the station. Other facilities in the station include food, drink and shopping, assisted travel lounge, cash machines, seating and waiting rooms. Now we are at St. Pancras Parish Church. When we talk about the history, in the early 1800s, a new church was needed to accommodate the rapidly expanding population in this part of London. It was to replace the ancient parish church to the north, where the original population had moved away and the building had fallen into disrepair. The competition to design the church was won by local architects William Inwood and his son Henry William Inwood. 
Finding inspiration in both Athens and London, they copied the Tower of the Winds and the two caryatid porches from the Acropolis and followed St. Martin in the fields in building a large iconic portico at the west end of the church. As a significant early example of Greek revival architecture in London, the church holds a grade 1 listing on the National Heritage Register for England. The foundation stone for the church was laid in 1819 by the Duke of York and the building was completed in three years. It was the most expensive church in London after St. Paul's Cathedral at that time and the builder of this church was Isaac Seabrook. The church was consecrated on 7th May 1822 by the Bishop of London. It has been used for worship ever since. The interior is equally impressive and largely Greek in style. Most of the church's original features remain, although some reordering has taken place. Pancras is a very little known saint. He was a 14 year old child who was a Roman and had converted to Christianity. As a result, he was martyred for his beliefs, but he is still remembered. This is the font which dates from 1887. However, only the bowl within the font is the original. The top is made from alabaster from Staffordshire and each face on the top half is decorated using gold leaf. The base and the plinth are marble. The pulpit was made in 1822 with wood from the famous Fairloop Oak in Haynaud Forest which had blown down in a gale two years earlier. This is the Blessed Chapel. It is part of the arrangement of the church in the early 1900s. This is in the fact the original high altar and marble surround. The church had clear glass windows when it first opened and the three east windows were installed in 1866. The rest, designed by Clayton and Bell, were completed in 1881. The windows in downstairs depict scenes from the life of Christ, while the larger windows in upstairs represent figures from the Tithium in the Book of Common Prayer.
The organ built originally for the new music hall in Birmingham is by Gray and Davison. It was in 1864. However, the smaller modern chamber organ is by Peter Collins. Two sets of Greek caryatids support the porches over the crypt doors. They are the church's most unique feature, giving the building a surprisingly pagan appearance. Initially, the caryatids had been too tall for the porches. Their waist lines bear the scars of the ensuring corrective surgery. Unlike the Athenian originals, These figures hold water jugs and torches to accompany the dead to their final resting place in the crypt. The crypt of St Pancras church was used for burials between 1822 and 1855 when burials in central London ceased. Only 560 interments took place which left many of the vaults empty. The crypt served as an air raid shelter for local residents in both world wars. The clock and bells of St Pancras form part of the local soundscape on the Euston Road. All eight bells can be rung by one person as they are linked to a chiming apparatus in the bell tower. During the day, the clock rings the Westminster chimes every quarter of an hour. The statue of the Archangel Michael in the south garden is by the sculptor Emily Young. It commemorates those killed and injured in the London bombings on 7th July 2005. Two of the four explosions occurred in the parish and the church became a focal point for people's prayers and grief in the days following the incident. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video at the St Pancras station.